you're using DaVinci Resolve for color grading, you're probably missing out on a few powerful hacks that can take your workflow to the next level. Today, I'm gonna show you five DaVinci Resolve hacks that will not only speed up your whole color grading process, but also take your footage to a new polished and cinematic level in 2025. But before we get into it, you might have watched my last video with DaVinci Resolve where I gave away a free DaVinci Resolve studio license. Well, I did mention I had two to give away, so here is the other one. Stay tuned around the minute three or four or maybe two of this video, so make sure you watch the whole video. Comment the word that comes up on the screen somewhere here, and uh, that's it, that's how you enter. Remember, you only have one week, seven days from the release of this video to enter. So make sure you watch the whole video, find the world, comment it down below and enter for your chance to win a free DaVinci Resolve Studio license. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. All right, the first hack is adding prism blur effect to your footage to create this cinematic distortion around the edges. The secret here is not overdoing it. The less, the more subtle it is, the better. Now, you can do this in different ways. I like to use the parallel node approach, but you can also just do this on a singular node at the end of your node tree. So how do we do this? So let's find the Prince Blur effect within the effects tab. Once you found it, drag it and drop it onto your node, and right away it looks horrible. This is because we have to create a mask so it only affects our edges. So let's create a mask usually just a circular shaped mask work for this and make sure you feather it enough. Once you're happy with the area that is affected, you still need to do a few changes. Right off the bat, the chromatic aberration is way too high. So let's bring this down. And then the blur, it depends on vibe you're going with, but honestly, most of the time, just a little bit of blur to create the anamorphic chromatic aberration and barrel distortion works just fine. This technique is great if you want to create a specific vignette to guide the eye of your viewer towards the center of the footage, but also just create a more anamorphic looking style of footage, even though you're shooting maybe on a spherical lens. During color grading, one of the most effective ways to guide your viewer to look exactly what you want it to look within the framing is by using tracked power windows. Simply add a circular power window in your color page and then position it over your subject and feather it out for a natural transition. Increase the exposure slightly or add a bit of contrast. Now, let's switch to the tracker tab and track the movement of the subject or the object. This method is a subtle way to guide your audience to look exactly where you want them to look. And this is especially helpful when you have a framing that the subject is maybe off to the side or there is something happening that you want to highlight somewhere not in the center of the frame so that that way you can guide the eye of the viewer to that specific corner, angle, or side of the frame. So it's that time of the video, just comment this word right here, down below, for your chance to enter this giveaway. Remember, only last seven days, so be quick, watch the whole video, find this word, enter below. Moving back to the video. If you're recording any voice whatsoever, you want to have this hack. This took my voiceover from literally this to this. It is such a simple technique that everybody should know. Whether you're shooting YouTube videos, you're recording voice, you're shooting interviews, whatever it is, this will change the way your voice will sound. I promise. So let's get into it. So let's open a Fairlight tab and here you can see at the top, your audio, and on the right, you have your tracks. So here on the right, wherever your track of the voice is, you're gonna press plus. Now we're gonna go into channel and vocal channel. A new tab will come up and you want to make something like a curve that looks like this. Obviously, depending on your voice tone and whether you're outside or inside, this will change, but I use this as a perfect base and then I change it depending on the surroundings. And once you're happy, just go up here and save your preset. I simply save it as studio voice because this is what works with me. And uh, that's it. Every time you have a voiceover, an interview, or whatever it is, simply apply this one and adjust it to the environment around it and your voice will sound so much better. Now, as you can see here, I'm recording audio separately. This microphone, right here, it's not connected to my camera because it's connected via XLR to an audio recorder for better audio. 
So how do I quickly align this in the camera? Sure, I can clap and just try and align the clap. But there is a solution to this that takes a millisecond. Simply select both audio tracks, right click and auto align clips based on waveform. And that's it. I'm not sure if this is actually well known, but I didn't know when I started DaVinci Resolve. And this is why I'm making these videos for people who are just getting into DaVinci Resolve, for people who have been working with it for a few months. So I hope this helps. This took my interviews and my YouTube token sequence to a whole new level. And the last and final hack for this video, it's power grades. Honestly, if you're new to DaVinci, I don't know if you're using power grades, but if you are not new, you should be using this. And honestly, if you aren't, you're missing out. This is the biggest time saver in color grading ever, maybe. So here's how it works. Once you dialed in your grade with all of your nodes, or maybe just a few nodes, go to the gallery tab in the color page. Click on power grades, right click on your grade clip and click save as a still. Now change the label to the style of the grade, like film look or whatever specific style you want. And then anytime you need that look, simply drag and drop that still onto your note tree and you're done. You have your note tree there and ready. And this is why when I sell my personal lots, I include power grades just to help you guys go through my whole color grading process. Now, this shouldn't be a very final grade. I feel like this should be a very basic grade and then you can work from there. For example, the grade that I use all the time, it's a perfect basic grade, but you always end up adding or removing things, just depending obviously on the footage. You always will need to adapt it to the footage that you're shooting, unless it's always like a YouTube studio like this, that's always the same kind of lighting that I know it's a drag and drop and I have a power grade for that. But for anything else, you always need to adjust it. There is no one solution fits all. And that's it. These were my five DaVinci Resolve hacks for 2025. I hope you learned something new. If you did so, leave a like and subscribe down below. And again, don't miss out on the chance of winning a free DaVinci Resolve studio license. Maybe you're still stuck into the free version, you're unsure if you need the studio, or you've been thinking to switch to DaVinci for a while. This is your chance. Comment this word down below, and I'll see you guys next week in the next video. See ya.